Hello and welcome to this Electrical Principles training video. In this video we're going to continue considering our subject of power. In a previous video in this series we looked at the basic power formula, which if you remember went in the following way. We simply said that to find the power in a circuit represented by the letter P, that would be equal to the current multiplied by the voltage. So P is equal to I times V. And we proved by practical experimentation that that was accurate. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to take our basic power formula and we're going to combine it with a very familiar formula that we know from previous videos in order to create our second power formula. We're then going to perform a practical experiment to prove that that new formula actually works in the real world and we might have a think about maybe why our results don't come out exactly the same the first or second time. So let's have a look at how we're going to create our second power formula. We're going to start from this position. We know that P is equal to I times V. And I always like to refer to this as the basic or first power formula. But what we also want to do now is tie in Ohm's law into this. Basically, what we're going to do is we're going to figure out a way that we can calculate power without knowing the supply voltage. OK, so let's have a look at how we can do this. So in order to do this, we need to have another formula, which we're very familiar with, which is uh, Ohm's law, I equals V divided by R. Now, what we're going to look at here is what happens when we start to manipulate this formula. So first of all, we're going to rearrange this formula. We're going to transpose it to make V the subject. Now, hopefully, if you've been following my videos for a little while, you'll be familiar with how I go about transposing formula. So let's just kind of dive in at the deep end a little bit here. And if you're not too sure that you can follow this, then please watch uh, my video on transposing formula, which is coming very soon. We've got, first of all, uh, I equals V over R. So we want to get this V by itself. We want to make that the subject. And at the moment, we've got that V and we are dividing it by R. Now, when we want to isolate a letter, we have to look at what we're doing to that letter and then do the opposite function. So here, V is being divided by R and the opposite of dividing by R is to multiply by R. So we times both sides by R, which on this side ends up being I times R, and on this side ends up being V. And we've looked at that in a couple of different videos, how that works. Now, obviously, uh, I need to have the uh, subject on the left because my brain won't let me leave that alone if I try and leave it on the right. So I always write it out with the subject on the left. V is equal to I times R. Now, at this point, we need to kind of take a step back and think about what this formula actually means. Even actually just taking this away from an electrical kind of standpoint and just looking at it in pure mathematical terms. Because we've been using calculators for so very long now, there's become a little bit of a tendency, I've noticed with my learners, that they see the equals sign on their calculator as the kind of enter button, the work this out for me button, the give me the answer button. But actually, that button has more power. Well, rather, that symbol on that button has more power than that. So if we go back to basics and look at that symbol there and think, what does that mean? Well, that symbol means is the same as. Is the same as. So what this is saying is that V is exactly the same as I times R. They are the same thing. Well, that's interesting, but how does that help us out in the context of this video? Well, what we can do is we can take our basic power formula, which if you'll remember was P is equal to I times by V. And what we can do now is we can take this V here and we can swap it out for something that is exactly the same as it. And we've just shown that V is exactly the same as I times R. So what that means is that we can write this as P equals I, and then instead of timesing by V, I'm going to times it by what V is exactly the same as, I times R. So can you see this I has just remained in the formula, and this V has now turned into I times R, because V and I times R mean exactly the same thing. So what that means is we've got a situation where we've got P equals I times I times R. Now that's a little bit kind of clunky in terms of how that's been written out. So we would gather the terms here. So we're doing I times I, and we know that when you multiply something by itself, it becomes I squared like that. So we've got P equals I squared 
multiplied by r. And that is our second power formula. So we've now got power formula number two. So let's put that over here. We've got power formula number two is p equals i squared r. Now we're going to have a little chat in a few moments about what this is useful for, what it can tell us. But before we do that, it may look like these are two completely different formulas. They may look completely different. But what we're going to do now is we're going to head down to the workshop. We're going to take some measurements on one of our heaters that we used in the previous video. And we're going to prove that actually these two formulas mean the same thing. They work out in the same way as long as you've got the correct values to put in here. So let's head over to the workshop now. So just to prove that our new calculation actually works, what we're going to do is we're going to use our 2 kilowatt heating load that we used in a previous video. We're going to measure its internal resistance and then we're going to perform the calculation to see if our new formula works. We already know how much current this draws from another video in this series. So let's use our Mega Evo 835. We'll measure the resistance of the heating element here. So we'll clip that on there and we'll clip that on there. And when we measure that, we see we're coming out with 26.16 ohms. So that's 26.16 ohms. It's hovering around out there. So let's take those numbers back up to the classroom and we'll have a look at whether that formula actually works or not. So down in the workshop, we saw that our heater had an internal resistance. Uh, R was equal to... 26.16 ohms and we also saw that the uh, current that was flowing through that heater and we're taking this value from the previous video where we did this test in the previous video the uh, current flowing into the heater had a value of 8.4 amperes so 8.4 amperes and bear in mind that what we're trying to find in all of this is our value for power. We're trying to figure out what the power is in this question. So in order to calculate this, we're going to use our second power formula. So we're going to say that P is equal to I squared R. So that means that we're going to do 8.4 squared, and then we're going to times it by 26.16. So if we put that into our calculator now, we're going to go 8.4 squared multiplied by 26.16. And that's giving us a total power of 1,845.8 uh, watts. Okay, so we've got 1,845.8 watts. Now, if you remember, that heater that we used was a 2 kilowatt heater. So we had 2 kilowatts there. You may also be thinking, well, in the video prior to this, we actually came out with a power rating a little bit above two kilowatts here, we're a little bit below two kilowatts, so we're just below 2,000 here. So why do you think that might be? Why do you think we might have a slightly lower value here than we measured or calculated in the previous video? Well, to help us understand that, let's head back down to the workshop and we'll have a little bit of a further explanation. So why is it then that our calculation came out a little bit lower than we were expecting it to with the numbers that we took before? Well, if you think about it logically, when we measured the current in a previous video that was flowing through this heater, the heater was connected to the supply, so there was electricity actually flowing through it. Now, the heating element inside here is just a piece of conductive material, and we know that when you pass current through a conductor, it starts to heat up. And we also know that for most materials, as the heat of the material gets higher, the resistance gets higher also. So if you increase the temperature of the conductor, you actually increase the resistance of it. So what I've done now is I've had this heater plugged in for a few minutes and it's got really quite toasty now, so it's dissipating a lot of heat. That's why I've removed the mega instrument from leaning against it. I didn't want to damage my tester. What I'm now gonna do is disconnect this from the supply and then we're gonna measure the resistance of this now that it's got a little bit hotter. So let's see what's happened with the value. So I'll unplug this. So that is now starting to cool down. So we'll measure this nice and quickly so we get as accurate a result as we can. So once again, we're gonna measure the resistance of the heating element by just connecting across the line and neutral of the pins there. And we'll let the tester do its thing. And you can see there that it's coming out at 27 
0.05 ohms. And you can see there actually what's happening is that we'll probably start to drop down a little bit now as it gets cooler. So we can assume that when that was uh, hot, it was at least 27.05 ohms. So what we're going to do is we're going to now take that value back up to the classroom and we're going to do the calculation that we need to to figure out if we've got this a little bit more accurate now. So this was the value that we calculated when the heater was cold. Now let's have a look at the value that we calculate when the heater has had current flowing through it and the heating element has got hot and increased its resistance a little bit. We start off from the same point, P equals I squared R. Notice that every single time I do a calculation, I write down the formula and that helps me to remember uh, all the formulas that we need to know for uh, electrical science. And we're gonna put in the same current, 8.4. We're gonna square that and then we're gonna times that by our new resistance that we just measured down in the workshop of 27.05 ohms. So let's put that into the calculator and see what we come out with. 8.4 squared times by 27.05. So we've got 8.4 squared times by 27.05. And that is now coming out at 1,908 watts. 1,908 watts. So that's a slightly more realistic value. And again, we're getting even closer to that two kilowatt value that we know our heater is rated at and the slightly higher than two kilowatt value that we calculated in the previous video. So what purpose does this formula actually serve? It's interesting to see that we've got another kind of way of calculating power, but what use is it? Well, this formula can be used for telling us uh, how much power is wasted by a conductor during its operation. And a classic example of this is if you have a transformer, that transformer has a coil of wire inside it that acts as an inductor. And that coil of copper wire has a certain value of resistance and we pass current through. Now we know that when you um, pass current through a transformer, when you use a transformer, it starts to get hot. Part of the reason for that is you've got current flowing through a resistance, the resistance of the winding of the coil there. So if we take the resistance of the coil and times it by the current flowing through the coil squared, it will actually tell you how much power is being lost by that transformer in the form of heat due to the copper winding. There are other reasons why transformers get hot and waste energy, uh, but this is the uh, one that relies on the resistance of the copper. So we could also apply that actually to simply conductors feeding loads in a building. And it's worth noting as well that because this I is squared, if you double the amount of current flowing through a conductor, you actually quadruple the amount of heat that it dissipates. And of course, we know that cables getting hot is one of the main things that we're trying to uh, reduce or prevent from causing a problem in our electrical installation work. So understanding what this formula is actually telling us, that the more current you pass through a conductor, the more power it wastes in the form of heat, the hotter it gets, and that that kind of action is exponential, then that leads us to understand even more deeply how important it is to perform our calculations carefully when we're designing and then installing our electrical circuits. So there's our second power formula. That's the takeaway from this video. We need to remember that formula for our exams and for the real world. And all that remains in this video is to say thank you very much for watching.